What's up, BHS? I'm Brax. And I'm Riley. Welcome to the first episode of BOE for the year. We hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. We're changing things up this year, so you can expect episodes every two weeks with more in-depth stories that you're interested in. Let's get things started with some local and national news. Mississippi Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves has won the Republican nomination for governor, defeating ex-Chief Justice Bill Waller Jr. in the runoff. Reeves will face Democrat Attorney General Jim Hood in the general election on November 5th. A new environmental foundation backed up by Leonardo DiCaprio is pledging $5 million in an aid to the Amazon wildfires. Earth Alliance was created last month by DiCaprio and philanthropist Lauren Powell Jobs and Brian Shepard. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, it launched the Amazon Forest Fund in an announcement on their website. The Alliance is also seeking donations to help repair the Brazilian rainforest called the Lungs of the Planet. Brazilian federal experts reported a record number of wildfires across the country this year, up to 84% over the same period in 2018. Two-term state treasurer Lynn Fitch has won the Republican nomination for Mississippi Attorney General. Fitch will face Democrat Jennifer Riley Collins in the November 5th general election. Because Fitch and Collins are the only two candidates running, Mississippi will elect a woman as Attorney General for the first time. Collins is an Army veteran and former director of the American Civil Liberties Union of Mississippi. Before Lynn Fitch was an elected treasurer in 2011, she was state personnel board director. She has been a state government attorney and has worked in private law firms. President Donald Trump skipped a discussion on climate with other world leaders at the G7 summit in France last week. He then claimed to know more about the environment than anyone. Trump left an empty chair as global powers debated last Monday. Environmental activists declared the summit a failure, marching to demand tougher global emissions rules and more aid for the Amazon. French pe President Emmanuel Macron, the summit host, shrugged off the absence, noting that Trump's aides were there instead. When asked beforehand about attending the climate session, Trump said it would be his next stop and that he wants clean air and water, but he never showed up. Now that you're caught up on the news, let's join reporter Sarah as she takes a minute to get to know our new assistant principals. BHS has two new assistant principals this year, but they're no strangers to Brandon High School. Both Brian Gaddy and Nicole Robinson are former BHS teachers. Mr. Gaddy is over career in technical education and the academies. He received his bachelor's and master's degrees from Mississippi State, his specialist degree in education from Delta State, and is currently working on his doctoral degree in educational leadership from Southern Miss. Students, I love working with them. I love seeing them succeed and helping them accomplish their goals. And uh, I mean, that's that's the reason I'm here is for them. So, uh, you know, wanting to help students, wanting to help people, and better our society as a whole uh, is really my whole motivation for being here. Miss Nicole Robinson received her undergraduate degree from Southern Miss, her master's degree from Mississippi College, and received her specialist in educational leadership from Ole Miss. Miss Robinson is the principal over English, foreign language, and the junior class. First, I was a teacher for 19 years, and I loved every minute of being a teacher. But I saw the need at that point to make a difference for more students than just the ones inside my classroom. So I want to see students succeed. That's the most important thing here. And this way, I can protect more students than just the ones in Sarah McGoy reporting for Bulldog Online Entertainment. Thanks, Sarah. Let's go over a few announcements. The first official thespian meeting of the school year will be Wednesday morning, September the 4th at 7.35 in Ms. Duffy's room, 309. Applications for SAD can be found outside of Ms. Russell and Ms. Colbert's door on the English Hall. All applications must be turned in by Friday, September 13th. Braden High School is starting a modern languages club that includes Spanish, French, and American Sign Language. If you're interested in joining, please see a foreign language teacher or Ms. McLean for an application. All applications are due by Friday, September 13th. Students who are taking dual credit classes this semester need to pay the dual credit fee by September 15th. You can pay online through your My Heinz account or by calling Heinz Rankin and speaking with Jerry Hester. You will not be able to register for spring classes until the fee is paid. If you receive free or reduced lunch, your payment will be sent to Heinz by RCSD. Students are reminded that student athletic all sport passes are on sale for $30. This pass is good for all regular season home games in every sport. See Coach West or Miss King in the office for details. The Brandon Amphitheater is in the middle of its second season of shows. The venue has 
hosted big names like Imagine Dragons, Dave Matthews Band, and Jason Alpine. Just in its opening season, BOE talked with the amphitheater staff to find out a little history on how it got started, how it's doing, and what we can expect for the future of the venue. The amphitheater sits on a piece of property that the city has owned for quite some time, and due to its location and proximity to the interstate and Highway 18, uh, it appeared to be a good place for a recreational area. And to tell BLE that the piece of land the amphitheater now sits on used to be a quarry where old stones were extracted. In fact, most of the stones you see around the amphitheater were from the former quarry. The amphitheater has far exceeded its um, expectations as far as its level of success. We have been able to um, secure several uh, big name acts like uh, Dave Matthews, Imagine Dragons, Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, Chris Stapleton. Uh, I think last year we probably sold tickets to uh, people in 46 different states. Uh, not only has the amphitheater itself been successful, but it has impacted the economic growth um, around town. The Brandon Amphitheater is heading into its third year of operations with plans to continue securing big name acts. The venue is working with agency Red Mountain Entertainment and Arrington says they will keep striving to provide the community with top-notch customer service. Destiny Hill reporting for Brandon Online Entertainment. Thanks, Destiny. The fall sports season at BHS is officially kicking off. And our sports reporter, Tyler Ward, has all the information you need to support your dogs this year. Thanks, Bryce. Football Bulldogs started their season with a big win over the number one ranked Yellow Jackets of Starkville. You don't want to miss a minute of the boys' games as we have a very competitive schedule this season, and this Friday we will travel to Clinton to take on the Arrows. Next week, the Bulldogs will face Warren Central at home on September 13th. The kickoff for both games starts at 7 p.m. The volleyball team has already faced some ups and downs this season since they started on August 9th, but we have faith they're going to win their 30th straight state championship. Today they will take on Pearl and District play at home, and on Thursday, September 5th, they will travel to Terry. Next week, the team will hold the snow threats ranking on Tuesday and see Pearl again on the Pirates Court on Thursday. JV games start at 5 p.m. with the varsity games following immediately after. The BHS swim team had a great showing in their first meet of the year. They took on Northwest Rankin in Germantown at the Flowood YMCA last Monday. The men's team went 2-1 over both opponents. Our Bulldog swimmers will compete again on Monday, September 9th. Tyler Ward reporting for Bulldog Online Entertainment. BOE recently spoke with head BHS principal, Dr. Brian Marshall, concerning the theme he chose for this school year. Let's listen to what he had to say. You may remember the speech given by Dr. Marshall in the first day of school pep rally. Because of the acoustics of the gym, it may have been a little hard to hear and understand. This year's theme, chosen by the administration, is one heart. BOE wanted to sit down with Dr. Marshall to learn more about how the theme was chosen and how we'll see it throughout the year. This summer, we went to uh, workshops in Boston, and we heard a couple of presenters talk about uh, empowering the heart. <clears throat> Dr. Akil Ross is the one that uh, really struck home. He told the story about the Tin Man um, in The Wizard of Oz. And we all know the story of the Tin Man, that the first thing he asked for was oil, because um, he'd been rusted for so many years. Um, and at the end of the story, the whole the whole movie, he, was at, he wanted a heart. That was his whole goal, was to have a heart. But it, at the end, the wizard gave him a, <clears throat> a clock heart. It wasn't a real heart because the Tin Man always had a, had a heart. He just needed a little oil. Um, and so we kind of compare that to kids at Brandon High that we all have what we really need. It's just sometimes we have to be able to oil up those things so that we can kind of think about what we have and what we're blessed with. Um, and sometimes they need that from teachers and encouragement. And so that's where we started from. How did you come up with the idea for One Heartbeat? Honestly, it was when I was uh, when I was looking through and listening to Dr. Ross talk, and then uh, I actually purchased his book at the conference and read it on the plane home. I uh, read the entire book on the plane home, plane ride home. And one of the things he says is, that if you want to inspire meaningful change, you have to make a connection to the heart before you can make a connection to the mind. And it made so much sense for us. As big as our school is, um, there are kids that sometimes get lost in the shuffle. And I think it's imperative that we try and find those kids and uh, bring them along with everybody else. 
uh, makes it one big family here at Brandon High School. Okay, and how will we see the one heartbeat theme throughout the year? Oh, you're going to see it a lot. Um, teachers are are, uh, are embedded with it through their professional development, uh, and everything we do that surrounds um, student bulldog bucks and things will go around one heartbeat. Um, the biggest thing is um, to uh, to help that everybody uh, remembers that we're one big family and it's, that we're all to get in this together. Uh, we're going to do the the heartbeat clap before the alma mater at every um, pep rally. So I think that's going to be neat just to keep our minds focused on who we are and what we're really about. It's almost fall, y'all. Every girl's favorite season. Let's see what the weatherman, Jaden, has to say and can expect for the days to come. Thanks, Bryce. I'm Jaden, and this is your BOE weather report. I hate to tell you all this, but it's still hot outside, and it's going to be hot for a while. Highs are hovering around the low 90s, and lows will be in the high 60s and low 70s. There's not a lot of rain in the immediate forecast, so we should still stay pretty dry. It does not look like the daily humidity is dropping, so hopefully that will make these high temperatures feel a little less brutal. So ladies, keep on drinking your pumpkin spice lattes and dreaming of the fall while it's still burning up outside. Back to you, Bryce. Alright, BHS, I know everyone has been following the big debate. Which chicken sandwich is better? Is it Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Don't you worry. BOE reporters Deja and Rivers settled the debate for you. Hey Brandon High School, I'm Rivers. And I'm Daisha. And today we're going to be comparing the Popeye's chicken sandwiches to the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. <laughs> to be quite honest, my favorite sandwich in the whole entire world is the original Chick-fil-A sandwich. Anywhere I go, I get that sandwich. Subway, original Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just my favorite so I'm feeling a little biased but I'll do my best to give y'all accurate information I also love the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich but I do like to eat other stuff like at Subway <laughs> yeah okay now let's get to it yeah let's get to it comparing I the size this one's a lot bigger and this a lot heavier yeah for sure Let's start with the Popeye's one. Yeah. The I'm going to start with the spicy Popeye's sandwich, and she's starting with the regular Popeye's sandwich. It's huge, just so you know. It is quite big. See? Oh, it looks like it has eggs on it, kind of. Does it? I hope not. It I'm not eating it. Mayonnaise and pickles. Mayonnaise and pickles. And chicken. And some kind of. That's this okay. is the spice I would say. Yeah, I'm going to take a bite from right here. And I'm biting off of this side. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Let's are y'all ready, BHS? <laughs> BHS, are you ready? <laughs> All right, let's try. It's actually not that bad. Pretty good. <laughs> We're swapping. <laughs> Mind our bloopers. <laughs> it's not spicy. But I do like the spicy sandwich better than the regular one. Yeah. Well, it has a kick, but not spicy. Yeah, it's not spicy, but it has a little kick. All right. This now, now it's time for may start mouth fires. Love it. <laughs> Love you, mean it. <laughs> I feel like I have stuff on my face. The best. Tastes like home, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> we actually just ate <laughs> this. Stop. Don't tell them that. <laughs> they don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> Winner. <laughs> the Chick fil A spicy one is actually spicy. This one's not, but it's good. I recommend both. I think 
this is my order. I'm going to go Chick-fil-A original, still unbiased opinion, better than the other ones. Then I'm probably going to go with the spicy Chick-fil-A sandwich since it's actually spicy. And I paid for spicy. So, and it came spicy. But then I'm going to go with the spicy Popeyes. And in last place, the original Popeyes. Do you agree? I don't really care for spicy. I'm going to say that one over that one. I like spicy stuff, so. This is my winner. That's also my winner, but she's eating it, so. That's all we have for you guys this week. I'm Deja. And I'm Rivers. And Chick-fil-A is the winner. That's it for this week, VHS. If you have any story ideas or a topic you want to be covered on that Bo show, email vhsnewsbo at gmail.com or talk to the news member. I'm Bryce. <laughs> and I'm Riley. Thanks for watching Bulldog Online Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> it worked.